Hey y'all, welcome to Peyton Energetics. I'm Peyton. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about a very rare starseed race, and that is the Cassiopeians. So when we talk about a starseed race as being rare, generally what we're talking about is one of our star family members who does not send quite as many representatives to Earth to be part of the starseed program. And the Cassiopeians would definitely check this box. So if you have never heard of the Cassiopeians or ever met a Cassiopeian starseed, you are not alone. This is one of the rarest of the starseed races. The guides tell us that there are not many Cassiopeian starseeds at all, certainly not compared to some of the starseed races that we talk about all the time, like the Pleiadians, the Orions, the Syrians. So we're talking about a starseed race that doesn't quite get as involved with us here on Earth as some of the other members of our starseed family. But it is good to know who the Cassiopeians are in case you ever have a chance to meet one of their fascinating starseeds. So today we're going to start off by taking a look at the Cassiopeians themselves, where they come from, what their history is, and why they're relevant to us here on Earth. And then we're going to take a look at Cassiopeian starseeds. What are some of the traits and characteristics of Cassiopeian starseeds? And what are some of the things that they may struggle with? Because as we go through the explosion of starseeds on the planet that we are seeing right now, chances are we're going to hear more from the Cassiopeians. So today's video is going to help you get prepared for that. So let's start by taking a look at the actual star race, the Cassiopeians. This is a race that, as you can imagine, comes from the Cassiopeian star system. They are known to be a race of absolutely beautiful feline beings. So the guides tell us that the Cassiopeians mainly exist on a planet that is roughly twice the size of Earth that has about 19 billion beings. So that's quite a lot. That's a hefty population. So the Cassiopeians are not small in numbers. They are just one of the star races that we don't hear quite so much about. So again, they come from the Cassiopeian star system and come from a fairly large population. And they are known to be very feline in nature. So the guides describe the Cassiopeians as descending from the original Lyran feline beings. Now, if you're familiar with your galactic history, you know that we trace most of the origins of consciousness in the galaxy to the Lyran star system. The guides tell us that the two initial seed races in our galaxy started out as feline beings and avian beings. And the feline beings that were existing in the Lyran star system were the founding race that actually created what the guides tell us is the human form in our galaxy. So humanoids in our galaxy trace our origins back to the Lyran constellation and back to the feline beings on Lyra. So this is where the guides tell us the Cassiopeians come from. They come from the original feline Lyran beings who actually went on to create modern human form in our galaxy. So as part of the history of the Lyran system, as y'all are probably familiar, there was a catastrophic war that took place in that system. And that happened when the ancient reptilians, the Draconians, attacked the Lyran and Vagan star systems in an absolutely catastrophic war. And what happened as a result of those attacks is it drove the Lyran and its sister star system, Vega, one of the largest stars in the Lyran system, it drove all of the survivors to spread out seeking refuge throughout the galaxy. So that is how we had this expansion of consciousness throughout the galaxy, was precipitated in large part by these reptilian attacks. So the Lyran beings from Lyra then went on to colonize several other star systems, one of which was Cassiopeia. So the guides say that the Cassiopeian system was created as a refuge for those beings 
who were fleeing the Lyran Wars. So the feline beings, many of them from the Lyran star system, ended up colonizing Cassiopeia and taking refuge there. And these beings then went on to create their own civilization, which is what we then, what we now know of as the Cassiopeian system. Now, the guides tell us that the modern Cassiopeians tend to exist in very high dimensions. So many of them are, if they are in a physical form, which whenever we talk about one of the star systems, one of the star races, it's a little confusing for our human minds because we want to think that all one star system or one race of beings is a certain way. And our human minds tend to generalize these things because we we just need a frame of reference. We just do. But we have a tendency then to oversimplify. So in most of these star systems, we have beings that exist at many different dimensions, many different density levels, Some may be in physical form or quasi-physical form where others may not be. So just always remember when we talk about our star family that we have to go super general and we lose some accuracy when we do that, but otherwise we'd be talking all day. So when we talk about the Cassiopeians, the way the guides tend to describe them is as being very highly evolved, crystalline-based feline beings. So the guides have said many of them have, many of the Cassiopeians have evolved out of having denser physical form and now exist in what we might consider to be a crystalline body. And apparently the energy that they embody most frequently is that of divine feminine. So they are said to be just absolutely beautiful feline beings in these crystalline bodies. Now, the guides do tell us that there are Cassiopeians that may still be in more of a physical form, something more familiar to us as humans. And these beings, according to the guides, may have green skin with purple body art or purple decoration on them. So that's one of the ways that guides have described the more physically oriented Cassiopeians. And apparently they look quite different than we do as earth humans. Now, this is another thing you'll see a lot of variety on as you start to get to know your star family. Even amongst the humanoid races, we have a huge scale in appearance, according to the guides. There are those races that look so similar to us, they could walk down our streets and we wouldn't know the difference. The Pleiadians, of course, are at the top of that list especially the fifth density Pleiadians are said to look almost exactly like an idealized version of earth humans. And of course we have the other end of the scale where we have those humanoid beings who while somewhat humanoid in nature look very, very different than earth humans. So of course the Arcturians are on that list. The Andromedans would be on that list. And the guides put the Cassiopeians in that category. Now, when the guides describe what the Cassiopeians are like, they often describe them as being very loving and very nurturing. And again, you may see this as the result of that beautiful divine feminine energy that they possess, but they're said to just be very nurturing, very loving, very kind. They're also supposed to be very good at body work. So this is a race that is very good at hands-on healing modalities and also working with things like math is supposed to be something they are very advanced with, working with crystals, working with sound healing, and then working with physical touch. Now, this is something that may actually carry over into Cassiopeian star seeds, and you can trace a lot of this back to the qualities and things that we saw in our Lyran ancestors, since the Cassiopeians consider themselves or trace their origin point back to the Lyran star system. So let me know in the comments below if you have ever worked with a Cassiopeian being. Maybe you have a Cassiopeian guide, or have you ever had the chance to actually meet a Cassiopeian starseed? They're incredibly rare. So if you have, drop that in the comment box below and let us know what that was like. And while you're down there, don't forget, 
hit the subscribe button and the like button if you haven't done that yet. Now that you have had a chance to meet the Cassiopeians, let's talk a little bit about Cassiopeian star seeds. Now, the first thing to know about Cassiopeian star seeds is how incredibly rare they are. So for as many star seeds as I have worked with over the years, I've only come across one star seed who had some Cassiopeian energy. So we are talking about a star seed race that's extremely rare on this planet. So when the guides talk about the characteristics of Cassiopeian star seeds, some of the things that they mention are a tendency to be very hardworking. So a very strong work ethic is something that is said to be common in Cassiopeian star seeds. They're also said to be very feline. So you can see that feline energy of the Cassiopeians themselves in Cassiopeian star seeds. They're also star seeds who the guides say tend to end up at the center of attention. Now, this isn't necessarily something that Cassiopeian star seeds seek out, and they certainly don't do it from a perspective of ego. But the guides say that they tend to be individuals who are very well-rounded, very knowledgeable on a wide range of topics, and they're willing to share their knowledge with others. And because of that, the guides say they tend to kind of find their way into the center of attention. Again, not that they're seeking it out for egoic purposes, but they just have a credibility, a knowledge, and a willingness to share what they know that puts them in the spotlight, whether they want to or not. So this is something that you may notice if you know a Cassiopeian starseed is they tend to be very in the loop. So they tend to be starseeds who know what is going on, who are very able to keep their eye on the big picture. So the guides have said that Cassiopeian starseeds are known for their intuition and for being very skilled at seeing what is to come. So your Cassiopeian starseed may have the gift of precognition, of knowing what's going to happen before it actually does. And again, this is something that makes them very valuable to have around. So they're known for being very intuitive, especially the guides say with a gift toward precognition. So they are starseeds who may be very good at seeing future probabilities, what is most likely to happen in a given situation. And they may have precognitive dreams as well. So this is something, again, that just makes Cassiopeian starseeds helpful to be around. This, this insight, this perspective they have that others don't, it just is what leads them to end up in the center of attention. Something else that the guides mention about Cassiopeian starseeds is that these starseeds, maybe more than others, tend to be absolutely ancient souls. And this makes sense if you think about it, because the Lyrans themselves were the oldest of our galactic ancestors, and these are their direct descendants. So the guides say that Cassiopeian starseeds are truly ancient souls. They are also very known to be humanitarian. So these are starseeds who are likely to fight any form of injustice, to kind of have a zero tolerance policy for anything that is unfair, anything that mistreats people. So they make great humanitarians. And something else that's kind of unique about Cassiopeian star seeds is they tend to be people watchers. So the guides say that Cassiopeian star seeds may be great as sociologists because they just like to watch and study people. And again, that watching tendency, you can see those cat tendencies coming in. So they're very, very observant many times. So again, they tend to be watchers, tend to be observing people, taking in the crowd, noticing what's actually happening. So very observant, very alert. Again, you can see the cat influence coming in. And something else that is said to be a particular skill of Cassiopeian starseeds is their gift at maintaining their galactic connections. 
Now, we've talked in previous videos about how star seeds, more than the average population, tend to be much more dialed in to our galactic roots. And that just is part and parcel of being a star seed, is we came here to channel, to anchor galactic energy into the planet. So it would make sense that star seeds tend to have an easier time connecting with the galactics, with our star family, than with the average human or even the average light worker. But Cassiopeian star seeds are said to be really, really excellent at this. The guides say that they tend to be very, very connected with their star family and to be able to tune in very easily to multidimensional information and also to galactic information. So these are star seeds who, even more than the typical star seed, tend to have a very easy time maintaining their galactic connection. And star seeds kind of go across the board in terms of how connected they stay once they come into this incarnation. So some, of course, will never even wake up, whereas others become activated at some point in their awakening journey and start to open their galactic communication. But the guides say that Cassiopeians always seem to be very dialed in. And again, to me, this always suggests that feline connection because the guides always tell us how multidimensional cats are that cats can easily shift dimensions and they do it all the time. And so this feline energy that the guides tell us is so strong in Cassiopeian star seeds may be a, a contributor to what helps Cassiopeian star seeds continue to stay very tapped in with their galactic family, even when they incarnate. Now, some other signs of that cat influence that you may notice in Cassiopeian star seeds is the guides say Cassiopeian star seeds tend to be fairly reserved. So these may be star seeds who are a little shy, a little quiet. They're not going to be the ones who are blurting out their entire life story to you, not going to be the oversharer that you know. So they tend to be, again, that watcher, that observer, but very tapped into what's going on around them. So even though they tend to maybe seek to stay a little on the sidelines, doesn't always work out for them because people naturally gravitate toward them. So they make excellent leaders, excellent teachers, and just tend to find themselves at the center of what's going on, even though they're not seeking it out. And something else that Cassiopeian starseeds often excel at is staying in the moment. And this is something... Staying present can be such a huge struggle for starseeds and lightworkers, right? We have to get out of the mind. We know that, but the mind is powerful, y'all. The ego does not like to be told to sit in the back seat. So learning to stay present, learning to stay in the now moment is something that is a big challenge for most of us in the awakened community. But the guides say this is something that the Cassiopeians and their starseeds as well tend to be very, very good at. So they tend to be very good at staying present, not getting distracted by the past and the future and what might happen, but just being in the moment. And again, reminds me of that cat energy. And the guides also say that Cassiopeians, even though they may find themselves in the center of attention, people are drawn to them, they make great leaders. The guides say that they rarely come from a place of ego. Now, this is not true for all of the starseed races. We have a whole scale in terms of how easily a starseed race has overcome ego. And some starseed races have done better at that than others. But the guides say that the Cassiopeians and Cassiopeian starseeds tend to be very, very good at this, at staying out of the ego, staying in the present moment. And so again, you can see that feline influence, cats being great at being in the moment, being very multidimensional. And so that's something that you may notice if you have the rare opportunity to meet a Cassiopeian starseed. And finally, the other thing that jumps out when we talk about Cassiopeian starseeds is the guides say that Cassiopeian starseeds tend to really like to move their physical body. 
So whether that is working with their hands in doing healing work, being active, the guides say that Cassiopeians tend to be very comfortable with physical activity. And again, this makes perfect sense because the Lyrans were known for the same thing. They were known to love being active, love doing work. The guides say that the original Lyrans, and you'll notice I switched between saying Lyra and Lyra. There is a difference, but the guides have told me what it is and I always forget it. So pardon me if I jump back and forth between Lyra and Lyra. I just notice that I tend to do that. Um, the Lyrans, the original Lyrans were known to love the physical body. Uh, they tended to excel. They love doing physical labor, even hard physical labor, the guides say, is something that many Lyrans used to love. So again, seeing this pass through to their descendants in the Cassiopeians isn't a surprise. You can see the influence of our galactic forefathers, just as we can see things pass through family lines here on Earth. So the Cassiopeians are said to be both lovers of being in the physical body and also loving to move, loving to stay active, and also being very good with hands-on work, especially hands-on body work, the guides say, is something that for a Cassiopeian starseed might be very, very attractive. So now that we've talked a little bit about who the Cassiopeians themselves are, where they come from what their star seeds look like, what some of the common characteristics that Cassiopeian star seeds may have. Let's talk for a moment about some of the struggles that Cassiopeian star seeds may face. And the main thing that the guides have pointed out about Cassiopeian star seeds is there can be in some Cassiopeian star seeds a tendency to take things too personally. So whereas some people very easily let things roll off their back, Cassiopeian starseeds may not be quite that skilled with that. They may have a tendency to take things personal, to be self-critical, self-judgmental. So Cassiopeian starseeds may have a tendency to be a little self-critical, to maybe slide into judging themselves, being critical of themselves, and taking it personally when other people have criticisms of them or don't receive them the way they would like to be received. So this is something that may be reflected in some Cassiopeian star seeds. And the other thing that the guides mention can be a weak spot for some Cassiopeian star seeds is the tendency to hold in their emotions. So this is something that Cassiopeian starseeds may not be super comfortable wearing their heart on their sleeve. Again, you see that cat energy. And so holding in emotions to the point of bottling them up, repressing them, may be something that becomes an issue for some Cassiopeian starseeds. So that's just something that you may want to keep an eye on if you happen to be a Cassiopeian starseed is to make sure you're processing your emotions in a way that's healthy. And then finally, the last thing that the guides had for us on Cassiopeian star seeds was to mention their energy and what their energy feels like. Because as we've talked about in several of these videos, each of the star races has a very unique energy. We have talked about how the Arcturian energy feels very soothing and calming. And we've talked about how Pleiadian energy to many people feels very buzzy and energizing. And the Syrians feel very solid and reliable. And so the guides wanted us to know a little bit about what Cassiopeian starseed energy feels like or may feel like if we're connecting with it. And so the one word they had to describe this energy was intense. And that is probably the best word to describe any race that descended from the original Lyrans, because that is what the original Lyrans were known for being a little intense. So if you meet a Cassiopeian starseed and have a chance to feel their energy, just see if you notice this intensity, because it's something that they are known for having a very strong energy. And I'd love to hear what it feels like to you if you have experienced it. So let me know that in the comment box below. And once again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.
So thank you guys so much for watching these videos. I so appreciate you and your incredible comments. Y'all are amazing commenters. So thank you so much for watching these videos. And I always appreciate your help in getting these out to more people. So if you can help me by sharing these videos with any other star seeds or light workers who need support right now, it would help me help more people. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. Please let me know in the comments what else you would like to hear videos on and we'll make that happen. I'll see you soon. Bye.